Aha. Hello, my name is Paul. I'm an external speaker. This is my confession. Um, up until the end of last year, I was in charge of mission delivery at the National Marine Aquarium. Uh, we approached the research team, Christina, uh, through ISSR to help us generate some research findings that would enable us to find out a bit more about our clients, our visitors, um, and better deliver our mission. So the National Marine Aquarium, uh, as a public-facing marine conservation charity, uh, works a mission uh, which states we are driving marine conservation through engagement. That sounds great, uh, but what does it mean? What is engagement anyway? Well, in, in, it's a fairly um, broad thing, and engagement has um, many forms. Uh, in terms of driving marine conservation through engagement, we see it um, as kind of three main things. One is engaging people's interests. So it's providing opportunities for discovery of the marine environment um, and driving marine conservation through that discovery. Second is engaging people in activities, so en encouraging participation through events, through workshops, through interactive learning, uh, through citizen science projects. Um, so it's driving marine conservation through that participation. And thirdly, it's engaging people to act. So it's facilitating behaviour change action towards more sustainable lifestyles. And all of these approaches or sort of forms of activity have one common aim, and that is to engage people with the ocean to enhance connectedness, uh, that feeling that the ocean is part of our lives. And that should, in turn, influence future behaviour um, and decision-making regarding uh, the marine environment and its relationship with um, their lives. So the re research that Christine will introduce in a minute forms part of a larger effort to better understand our impact. What is the outcome of an experience or an engagement with the aquarium? So going back to kind of informal learning basics, uh, the interactive experience model, um, which was put forward by uh, Falk and Deerking in the early 90s, um, tells us that the outcome of an experience is influenced by three overlapping factors. One is the social context, the people that you are with uh, when you're learning. Second is the, the personal context, where you are in your head, so to speak, when that learning is taking place. Um, and the physical context, what is around you? as a learning experience um, happens. And those, the combined effect of these three creates what they call the interactive experience, which shapes the outcomes or the impact of, um, of their engagement or their learning experience. So thinking kind of through this lens led us to start looking at research in different areas and, um, around this. So pedagogy, how we um, engage people and how we talk to people and what learning styles we use the values of our visitors, the motivation behind our visitors visiting us or engaging with us um, and how we can um, build upon that. Uh, blue space, the impact of the marine environment itself upon people's lives, upon their emotional well-being. Um, and linked to that, restorative environments, uh, the impact of the qualities of the aquarium <coughs> space itself, where that learning, a lot of the learning is, is happening for our visitors. So research in these, in these different areas, quite diverse areas, the, the aim really being to measure and enhance the outcomes from, a, from an engagement with the aquarium in terms of, um, excuse me, in terms of knowledge, yes, so we want people to learn stuff, but also their skills, inspiration, attitudes toward the marine environment, the values, and ultimately uh, the behaviour that they exhibit when they leave us or they move away from, from an engagement with us. So the particular piece of work that we wanted uh, the research team to, to look at um, was the role of values in shaping ideas, interpreting messages and engaging with the aquarium. How important are values in conservation communication? Before we hear about that and the research that we did, I just want a quick aside, because I've now left the aquarium and I've moved into a different organisation. I'm now um, applying my trade for the Shark Trust. And the Shark Trust is a very different kind of approach to conservation, not so much conservation through engagement, but conservation through wildlife protection, through fisheries management, and through fostering responsible trade and consumption of shark products. So are values important in this different area of work that I'm, that I'm now involved in? Um, in the words of Ed Miliband, hell yes. Um, it's, uh, it really is um, relevant in all areas of our activity. Having a handle on the values of those that we wish to convince and persuade is vital. So far from running away from this project now that I'm not at the aquarium, the, aqu the aquarium wishes to continue, but I also wish to continue in my new role. Um, so I'm busy kind of thinking up new ideas for Christina as we speak. Um, 
Before I hand over, I'd just like to quickly thank ISSR for um, helping facilitate this project and for giving us a bit of seed funding to allow it to happen. So now I'll let Christina tell you about the research. Thank you. So yeah, I'll be talking about the research side of True Order's Eyes. Um, so this was, as Paul said, funded by the ISSR through the Small Collaborative Awards. Um, so it started in June last year and it was a six month project and we looked at visitor, visitor values at the aquarium. So what are values? Um, so Paul already mentioned something about this, but values are sort of high level beliefs, long term beliefs, they're very in importance and they guide people in life. And there's a range of values that has, have been identified in research and some of these are on the image here. Um, and they tend to be defined, uh, divided into value clusters as well. And we focus specifically on those values that have been known to relate to sustainable behaviours. Um, so from previous research, we know that values influence the way that people interpret information and the messages that they come across. They tend to influence uh, how our attention is drawn to things. Um, so we tend to be motivated when we think that something, an issue, for example, climate change or um, marine pollution, uh, whether this is affecting the things that we, we value. Um, so being aware of visitor values is very important for um, the aquarium as they try to educate their visitors about the marine environment and also try to encourage behaviour change using various exhibitions. So as I said, we looked at visitor values. So a large part of this project was designing the survey that we could use um, so we wanted to use a survey that was used in uh, academic research before, which is the one on the left here. Um, but because it's such a public environment, we wanted to make sure that we would attract visitors to it and they would actually be interested to fill it in. And it would also be something um, that's easy for them to read and get through. They would understand what they were being asked and they would also learn something about um, the marine environment and the creatures they might come across when they walk around the aquarium. Um, so we turned it into a short personality test where people could find out what kind of sea creature they are. Um, so we measured four value groups which are known to link to sustainable behaviours, which is egoistic, altruistic, biospheric and hedonic values. And we linked each of these to a different animal. So they could fill it in and then they would get oh, your, um, your stingray and then they would get a little bit of information about that animal as well. But at the same time, it would give us information <coughs> about visitor values. So a little bit about the findings. Um, I do have a poster outside, so if you want to find out more, you can see more on the poster, so I don't have time to go into this in detail. Um, but a quick summary, um, we found that people come in with a wide range of values, um, and especially their hedonic values <coughs> were quite high, which means they were interested in having fun, which makes sense, they're going to the crowd, they're interested in having a good time. Um, we also found that values linked to their reasons for visiting the aquarium. Um, they also link to the factors that people find important um, when they buy seafood and they link to their more general sustainable intentions, which again highlights the importance of keeping these values into account when trying to communicate with visitors in the aquarium. We also had some additional findings apart from just looking at values. We looked at these sustainable intentions um, and how they differed between the entrance and the exit because the survey was both at the entrance and the exit. Um, and we found that um, the intentions tend to be higher at the exit compared to the entrance, but only for first-time visitors. So this leads us um, to think about the question whether a visit to the aquarium is especially likely to motivate visitors um, when they're there for the first time. But this is something to look at a bit more. Um, but there's some other things we want to look at as well. So there's um, some plans that we're looking into if we can get the funding about exploring a value approach to engage visitors with the marine environment. So there's a range of questions that we're looking at. Should we provide messages that link to specific values? What values do staff use when they communicate to their visitors? And do values influence whether a visit to the aquarium motivates people to change their behaviour? And I want to quickly point out the project team as well. So I didn't do this research on my own. Um, I worked closely together with Michelle. Um, and we also had advice from Paul Warwick and Sabina Paul and obviously work together with the aquarium um, with Paul Cox and Debbie Cracknell so I want to thank all of them as well. And that was it.